You know when uh, we we'll call her S.C. Janina, senior elder, S.C. S.C. Janina and Ms. Liz first came to our church. They were both, you know, really overweight. And, and a lot of that resistance to lose weight was actually, if I remember correctly, they were praying for the lose weight miracle instantly, right? Now, I'm not saying that cannot happen, right? But um, if, if you pray for something... and you still want to keep your idol, you're not going to get that type of prayer answered, right? The reason why we go after people for weight is it's a fundamental issue. There was no overweight people in the book of the Bible. Well, okay, I take that back. We had Eli, priest Eli, corrupted, overweight, scheming the system, and the Bible says that when he died, he was grossly overweight, and when he heard that his sons had, were killed in battle, he fell back and broke his neck, and he died as a very overweight high priest. So when we have people uh, fast, it's really a fundamental test for you to, to, to gauge your spiritual level because, you know, even it, because it represents your flesh, your ability, your willingness and determination to control your flesh, right? Can you just control your flesh and not eat? Or do you have to be forced not to eat by, if you were, you know, in a, in a situation where there's no food, and if you go through this yo-yo effect that I've seen with some of you for the last years or five years or ten years, that just reflects your spiritual condition to me as well. It's just a yo-yo effect. And the person that was living with uh, the elders who had the car, you know, towed because of no gas, I think that person was, what, 38, 40? And to in this in this answer, I didn't have permission to put gas. It's so ridiculous. I hear that type of excuse all the time. Well, I did. You didn't specify exactly that I cannot do this or that I can do that. It's you're you're mocking God and playing games. That's all it is. It's context, right? You have to understand context. You know the reason why we put people on snack fast is because you're falling asleep. You're you're. You're putting your body on overweight, uh, overdrive, and never giving the body time to rest. So if you just snack every few hours, snack before you go to sleep, and you tell me you don't eat a lot, I'm going to change my rhetoric. I'm not, not going to say donuts anymore. I'm going to say you're taking in 3,000 calories a day. Maybe that will make more sense. If you intake 3,000 calories a day, you know, 120 off a cup of juice, 800 calories off a frappuccino, 1,000 calories off one meal. Now we're close to, we're over 2,000 calories, and that's all going to be weight later. Amen? And so like S.C. Janina said, Image is important. Why? I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how biblical this is. Okay? I'm going to show you how biblical this is. And how it reflects and glorifies God, your image. Okay? Your image is, is also not just your action, your image. Give me First uh, John 3 first. Let me start with there. Beloved, I pray that in every way, okay, every way, you succeed and prosper and in good health. Succeed and prosper, we just presume finances. Yes, that's a big part. Succeed and prosper, so when you see this word prosperity in the Bible, Yes, we just presume like money, but I want you to expand beyond that. That's just part of it. Okay, money is just part of the prosperity. Your mental state, 
Are you prospering mentally? Are you winning the mental battles? Are you self-controlled with your mind? Not just your stomach, but your mind. That you don't allow a thought to control you, to manipulate your actions, how you treat others based on the constant mental thought process. Do you have self-control and victory in that area? Are you successful and prosperous in your mental realm? Because you see here it says, and be in good health physically just as your soul prospers. So unless your mental area prospers, your physical area will lack. Because the mental, okay, goes first. The physical follows. If you're having a hard time prospering physically, body-wise, health-wise, we have a problem in the mental area, right? People get sick because of the mental, right? They, they worry too much. You might worry so much, oh, you can't sleep, right? And then, and then now your body is, is reacting to the mental. And the mental is weak because it's not being led by the spirit, your spirit. And so when you look at yourself in the mirror and you have some physical issues, sometimes you may go after it physically, but you're not having victory because you still got to conquer the mental issue. Right? And the mental issue before that, the spiritual issue. And so how do we deal with it within our realm? And it's really basic. Okay? It's basic. Because everything is spiritual. Amen? And so, if, if you know, you have to understand kingdom principle. We are a kingdom as an individual. We are a kingdom as a church. You are a kingdom as a family. And God is a king. Monarchy, not a republic. If you apply biblical principles based on democratic Western culture influence, it's not going to work for you because the democratic republic system is Caesar's system. It's the Roman era. Right? It's not God's principle. God allows the Jews... They're conquered by Rome because of their sin. They don't want to be ruled by Rome, but yet Rome allows them some freedom. Right? Rome allows them to build in or, or to uh, have their temple practices, their religion gives them a measured freedom. And that's what's happening here in our modern time. And we want to call our country a Christian state because they give us freedom, right? A perceived freedom. And so in the Roman times, that's what they did. As long as you don't cause trouble with Caesar, you don't rebel, you can have a measure of freedom and to practice your religion. And the Pharisees, the leaders, accepted this. And therefore, became corrupted along with the system. And it just became religion. And, and a lot of the church out there operates in the same manner as the country. As a republic. Not as kingdom monarchy principles and so when you go to church when you go to work when you go to ministries when you how you perceive your parents how you perceive your elders you know your grandma grandpa older people in general your teachers your government your policemen you you approach them with western influence and not kingdom principle and therefore 
the reality is God's people, in most part, disrespect authority. And if you disrespect authority, the Bible says you will bring a curse upon yourself. The Bible clearly says, honor your rulers, whether secular or spiritual, because all government and authority is appointed by God. And, and for whatever purpose, whether some Christians are born in North Korea, China, other anti-Christian countries, but yet God appointed those leaders for his own purpose. Nebuchadnezzar, God says he is my servant. Pharaoh, I've raised you up for this purpose. If you go slandering them without realizing the bigger picture, you're actually mocking God's decision without being mature to look at the bigger picture. If you come to church with republic democratic principle and you treat your leaders or your pastors as though like, hey, I can vote you out and like you know something more than us because of your pride, you can just look at your life and see where's that really gone for you. Those who understand kingdom principle, you see, it's hard for us to grasp because you've been raised, okay, with the mindset of Western culture, republic, voting, freedom, capitalism. Now, I'm not saying it's like it's bad. It is what it is. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. And but that, so we have to uh, live within the rules of man, so that you can function. But you're supposed to arise within that system through God's ways to conquer the land and take it back. And so God uses a small nation, first Abraham, he starts small in anything, a small nation like Israel, I want you, multiply, be fruitful and prosper, take the land, don't let the weed take the land, right? The weed is the unbelievers, amen? It's the, it's the paganism, it's the other things. So if we don't become a Christian... To sit and just warm up your seat and get free dinner at church after service. You're called for a purpose. It's not to get saved and, uh, oh, I got a free ticket to heaven, so I'm just going to, you know, throw, do my minimum, come to church so that pastors don't get on me. I'm going to sit in the back. You know, I'm not, not physically, spiritually, I'm going to sit in the back. I don't want no responsibilities. I don't want pastor to ask me to take in any people I don't want to to leadership roles because oh and then you might give me an excuse you know I don't want to make a mistake so I, I don't want to ruin people's lives so please don't give me the leadership role it's your refusal to grow up period and if you keep giving us immature childish excuses then you're just going to be cleaning toilets for the rest of your life. We do need people who need to clean the toilets. The, there is dishonorable vessels in the house. There's honorable vessels in the house. There's golden vases and there's a trash can. There's a toilet. We need those. If you want to be a toilet, you can be a toilet. I think some people like being toilet. I don't know. Now, Getting to where I need to go, image, success and prosper. See, I pray, it's, it's, it's a desire, it's a requirement. I pray, beloved, that in every way, your finances, your mentality, your health, your thought process, your sleep, your marriage, your children, your job, your career, your clothes, your food, whatever you touch, I pray you succeed 
and prosper. And as that prospers, right, also make sure your health is prospering just as your soul, your mentality is prospering. This is the way of God that we are to prosper. You're not supposed to wither. You're not supposed to go hide in a corner. You're not supposed to go backward and go to something easy button. Your design, our nature, you know, your design, you're children of God. You don't think you're called to go do something hard? You're going to tell your child, don't grow up. Stay at that height, stay at the age, because it's going to cost me more money. Because there's more stress, I, I got to worry about college, I got to worry about who you're going to get married, I got to worry about your life, just stay a baby. Is that how you're going to live your life? I don't want to grow because I don't want to grow. What's that song called? I don't want to grow up, I want to be a as kid. <laughs> huh, you don't want the responsibility? You don't want to do what's hard? But yet we're going to go, oh, I'll do whatever God wants. But... As long as it's not hard. Some people have been commenting on my belt. LV, it means love. <laughs> it's a brand. It's a, it was a gift. This belt is worth more than my suit. My watch was actually worth more than the belt. I'm not doing this to brag, but I want to make a, a point. I do need to make a point. Before, you know, I, I wasn't, I, it didn't matter to me whether I wore expensive or good things. I could go to Costco and get the Kirkland brand shirt, and I was okay. But God is pushing me to a higher level, and I'm actually kind of enjoying it, right? Why does, does that, is that necessary? You know, is it necessary, so, you know, that question, is it necessary that we enjoy the better things of life? Let's go to Psalm 68. The true God who inhabits sacred space is a father to the fatherless. So he's our father, okay? How he treats you, father, father influence. A defender of the widows. He makes a home for those who are alone, right, inside you. You're the, you're, yours is you're his house. He frees the prisoners. He sets you free from your sin, your fear, your anxiety, whatever problems you got. He frees you. Why? So that he can lead you to prosper. He doesn't set you free so that you can just look the same and be the same and, and, and just be average. He, he sets you free, prisoner of love, prisoner of peace. That's who you become a prisoner of. Prisoner of, of gentleness, prisoner of grace. So you're, you're taken as prisoner of love. And like the enemy or the world, they take you prisoner to make you a slave to work for them. But he makes you a prisoner to prosper you. In all ways, right? First John. Prosper in all ways. All the ways. Succeed in all areas, right? What, I mean, what, what, if you get saved, then where's your testimony? Right? You, one testimony in, one, in your whole life, oh, God, God, kicked, God kicked the addiction from me. Okay, so I was addicted 20 years for smoking. So maybe that was my testimony, let's say. Oh, you know, God, you know, I, pr I, I smoked for 20 years. I prayed for one year. God delivered me smoking. Thank you very much. That was my, that's, that's God. Amen. And what if that was my only testimony in my whole life? How, uh, you know, that, that would be pretty sad. 
Because you know why? There's unbelievers who can kick that habit. Then how does my testimony glorify God if I don't keep going higher and the world can match it like Pharaoh's white, Pharaoh's witchmen or sorcery people, right? Moses drops the stick. Stick becomes a serpent. Pharaoh's wise people, oh yeah, we can do that too. You think God can kick your smoking habit? Well, guess what? We got a one called pharmacy. Here's some nicotine, whatever, gum. And see them kick the habit. How's your God greater? That's what Pharaoh's men did. Do you understand? Your, your testimony could be legit and real, but it better keep on expanding because the world is right behind. The devil's right behind with their own power, and you need to go higher. You better have more than one testimony in your whole life. You, you know, even when it comes to weight loss, we can say, God, help us lose weight. Well, guess what? You don't think they got Jenny Craig out there? <laughs> Jenny Craig got a testimony too, you know? We got to go beyond Jenny Craig. After you lose the weight, go beyond Jenny Craig. Amen? <laughs> Yet those who rebel against him, now the rebels are not the unbelievers. The rebels are those in his own house, will live in barren land without blessings and prosperity. All right, if you rebel against God, yeah, you're going to be the toilet cleaners. You're going to be the garbage men. I'm not saying their jobs are bad, okay? They are, they are good, they're good paying jobs, but I think for our calling, you, you can become, you know, you can have a higher position than that, right? We start at the bottom, that's fine. A lot of you are cleaning banks. And, and, you know, I hope you don't stay there when you're 80, right? We should, we should have a better job by then or a business or something that, you know, to show, show the world that, hey, God is real. Okay, let's go to Psalm 67 now. God, have mercy on us and bless us. Okay. God, be merciful to us and bless us. Why do I want to be blessed? It's besides getting out of our miserable state, right? Besides having wanting our bills paid and, and better food or not be starving, why do you want to be blessed? See, you have to look at the bigger picture. I want to be blessed, right? Everybody wants to be blessed out of their own greed, what is the bigger picture? You got to come to a higher revelation on all this, okay? The, you know, we talk about blessing. We talk about prosperity. It's just not so that you can have a nice life. That's secondary. That's third level. What's the primary purpose of God blessing you? Now, we talked about it earlier on the previous sermons. I said it's also to reflect who he is, right? Right? This, this verse, all right? Let's go. And show us your kindness. So bless us and show us your kindness. Why? Why? So, S-O, so the world, includes your family, includes your unbelievers, family, or your friends, will learn your ways. And all the nations will learn that you can save. Do you understand what this means? If you want to live poor on your life, the rest on EBT and low income, how is that going to show anybody, oh, God is in your life, most definitely, because you're the free person. <laughs> you know, Elder Doris here, she lived uh, low income for a while. She comes to this church, I said, get a job, right? You all come to this church, I said, get a job. Because you're not called to stay in there, all right? I mean, it's okay, you might have, you might have to start there, or maybe you got in trouble, but it doesn't mean you stay there. Go get a job, Doris, Elder Doris. 
We got we to gotta change some stuff here. We can't just live like this. So she got a job. 30 bucks an hour. Event coordinator, Redwood City. $30 an hour, amen? And she wasn't working for a long time. I mean, she had to go, she was doing some volunteer work. You know, she wasn't getting paid. And, and it was like stuck. She was stuck. Now she's going to start working, make 30 bucks an hour, and we're going to be moving on up. Amen? Yeah. Can't be afraid to work. All right. Um, pull down verse one again. Bless us, okay? So, God, bless us. So, we can use the other words. God, prosper us. God, restore our fortunes. Okay, that's what the Bible says. Okay, God says, I'm going to restore the fortunes of Jacob. Restore the fortune. Restore our health. Okay? And this is a measure beyond what the world can do. You need to keep on increasing from glory to glory, from higher glory. Why? So that in verse 2, your non-believing family members, your friends who call you a Jesus freak and go, why do you go to church so much and pray a lot, will see evidence. Wow. You from nothing have become something besides talk. Because that's what a lot of Christians do. They just talk. Talk, 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 talk. <laughs> and you got no depth. You don't need to talk. Just show some actions. Right? And then, you know, then your family, okay, verse 2, go to verse 2. The world or the other nations will learn. Wow, this is what God does? Wow. That we'll learn that God can save. Wow, this, this, this is what happened to you? Wow, you look like, you know, you, you, I saw you as Jabba. Jabba the Hutt. And now you look like Cinderella. That's a miracle in itself. And what? Not only Cinderella, you got half the kingdom? You're off EBT and low, low income and, and you're running a $5 million business? You got 100 people under you? You're on Fortune 500 magazine. You're on the interviews. You're, you're writing a book. And all that, whether whoever you, you, know, you want to be or whoever you are that's participating in this story of God, the love story that he's writing of you, as you obey and follow the plan he had, this is his plan, right, Jeremiah 29, the plans I have for you is not to harm you. So, because you think, oh, this hurts. God's like, no, I'm not going to harm you. Don't worry. Don't worry. Do you know there's a scripture in the Bible? What was it? Um, if God blesses you, it's Proverbs. I don't know exactly where. When God blesses you, it comes with no sorrow. I was like, oh, yeah, that's my verse. I don't want no pain. I don't want no big test. I, I just want, you know, blessing without the pain is good. Because, you know, if you go get blessed and it doesn't have God's stamp, it comes with a lot of sorrow, right? But God actually has a promise. He's going to bless us without sorrow. I really like that one. You know, some of us, and a lot of the church out there, you want your family saved, you want your friends saved, so you'll go, you'll go, you'll go, you'll go in and spend a lot of energy with your, you know, words and your air, lungs, believe it, yes, you're, and then, you know, sometimes you get critical and judgmental, are you going to go to hell? If you don't believe in Jesus, you're going to go to hell. And they're looking at you like, you look like you in hell. <laughs> right? Jabba coming to me telling me I'm going to go to hell. 
They got a lot of Jabba looking emojis over there in hell. <laughs> Hair all like this, yeah. Right? You're in debt. You live, you live as a slave to the system and we're going to tell somebody else they're going to go to hell? Let's not fool ourselves. Don't worry about that. Okay, don't worry about that. Worry about yourself, amen? Worry about following God's commandments because, you see, it's not about you wanting to be blessed because you want the good life. The bigger picture is you have to get blessed so that God is revealed to the world. And you get, you're the beneficiary of this. Do you understand? You're the beneficiary. It's like, wow, you know, I didn't even deserve this, but God, that, this is why he's holy. This is what it means. You see, he's holy. It's like he sends rain to the wicked and the righteous. But for us, we're like, you know what? If we, if we could, we had the power, we wouldn't send rain to the right, wicked, right? We'd be picking and choosing. That's, that's how we would do it. You all got problems. I know this. I got problems. Some of you have bigger problems, but we all have problems. And I want you to understand something, okay? Uh, let, let me, all right, I got to finish up. Let's go to uh, Noah first. I'm going to give you the secret, okay? Secret sauce. <laughs> because, you know, as like I said at the beginning, this is kingdom principle. You have to... You have to have kingdom mindset. If you have kingdom mindset and apply it the way God requires us, then you will have, you know, you will have, you will have outcome. You will have the desired outcome. If you apply church and Bible and how you treat people with the worldly cultural influence, you're going to get stuck. So you have to go beyond that and apply kingdom principle, monarchy system. Okay, this is a monarchy system. It's going to cut through your pride because you have to learn to submit. Noah became a farmer and decided to plant a vineyard. One day he drank too much of the wine he had and made and fell into a deep drunken sleep in his tent. So Noah... Not right away after he got off the boat from the world being flooded, but he, he started farming and he started drinking. Okay, he started drinking. This is more than probably just a one night stand for him of, with the wine. This is probably a habitual style. There's nobody in the earth, right? He's probably like a little bit discouraged or whatnot. He's, so he's trying to keep himself busy, makes a little wine, gets drunk. The point is not his habitual drinking. The point in this verse is how his sons react. Because everybody got problems, right? I used to drink a lot. I had high tolerance. I didn't even drink for taste. I just drink for the buzz. <laughs> Next! Some people would like to uh, uh, enjoy the taste, I guess. But we do not condone drinking because if you get drunk, you might find a mate just like when you saw, you know, Jim and, no, or uh, uh, was it Jim and Elder Joseph? <laughs> right? So if you get drunk, you, 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 what's ugly is going to be beautiful. <laughs> and that's why you don't want to get drunk, Okay. It's called beer goggles. <laughs> and you might think it was a woman, but it might be a man. <laughs> or vice versa. So this is why we don't encourage drinking. You might come thinking you got married with an opposite sex. <laughs> Functional alcoholics, right? So God doesn't want you to drink because, you know, it's just make sure decisions bad. But I used to drink a lot, okay? I drank for like, I don't know, 20 years, smoked for 20 years, went to nightclubs, 
And, you know, everybody looks good when you're drunk. So, all right. One day, he drank too much. And he fell into a deep... He, fell, he became drunk and fell asleep. And uh, so, so you might also end up naked, like somewhere on the streets. So he lay there stark naked. Now, Ham... That's an appropriate name, right? Pam. <laughs> Peeked in and saw his father's exposed body. So we have three sons. Noah's the authority, okay? Noah's the parent. Noah's the authority. Noah's not perfect, but regardless, Noah is considered a righteous person of God. God gave him the secret to build the ark. That's what's important. Not that he's has a little drinking problem. God will take care of the drinking problem. Don't worry. Okay? You got to look, look at the bigger picture. A lot of you all had drinking problems. Some still do, maybe. We have Tristan, by the way, moved here from Texas. Just raise your hand, Tristan. Jim's son, right? He moved here. He's, he's, he's going to... He was here, if some of you know him. He's a rapper, singer, perhaps, you know? We'll see. But anyway... Back, to, back on track. So, we're going to get a lot of people in this church also. Um, before, I will tell people you got to, like, you know, come with money, come without your problems. But now we're shifting, and actually, God is going to start bringing people who have no money. I'm going to pay their way, and they're going to come with problems. Because, you know, whether you have a jealous problem or you have a drinking problem, you got a problem. You're just manifesting differently, but we judge differently, you know? But the problem's the same. You're still coming with problems. Sin is sin, amen? It's how you view authority. This is what the scripture is about. Ham, the pork... Has been look at, you know, this guy must have some kind of resentment towards his dad because he's looking for, aha! I knew it! I knew it! You weren't the father or the dad that you should have been. We should have just all died in the flood. Why did you build the boat in the first place? That's his heart. Because when God allowed this opportunity, so you got to look at the bigger picture. Sometimes God is allowing Noah to go ahead and get drunk so he can reveal the heart of hamster here. <laughs> because, I ha- because the hamster here is going to uh, clean the toilets. So Ham peeked and saw his father's exposed body and that represents the leader's weakness. And he went and told everybody else, look, look, look at dad, look at the leader, look at that pastor, I knew it. I look at the government, look at the teacher, I knew it, they're corrupted, they're, they, got, they were hiding something, we knew it. 23, so Sham and Japheth took a large cloak and laid it across their shoulders and walked backwards into the tent. They never looked behind, they covered their father's nakedness. Out of respect, they purposely, see, out of respect, they purposely kept their faces turned away so they wouldn't see their father laying naked. They didn't care why dad drank. They didn't go, why dad, you're the, you you know, why are you drinking dad? You're looking stupid and making us look bad. They covered their dad. You know what that means? They didn't want to know why. They just say, you're our leader, you're our dad, and my job as an armor bearer, whether you're a wife to a husband, whether you're the church to the pastors, whether you're a student to the teacher, your job is to be armor bearer, right? Your job, because if the top is going to cover you, you should cover the top too. You know why people who are closer to the throne... They are the people that that protects others, covers others, not the ones that will expose others. I knew it. 
The people closer to the throne or the leadership or the presidency of a king, of, a, of even the church, you think we're going to put people who wants to look for us to fall around us? We're going to put people who are loyal and who protects us and who wants to look out for us even when we have a weakness. Not to go slandering us in the back. You, th you think you're ever going to become leader that way? No, you're going to go clean toilets like ham. <laughs> when Noah gained consciousness and realized what his youngest son had done, he uttered this curse. Curse upon you, canine, may he become the lowest of the servants to his brothers. May Ham go clean all the toilets. May the eternal one of God, of Shem, be blessed and let canine be his slave. Shem. And make plenty, may God make plenty of room for Jepheth's family and give them homes among Shem's tents and let Canaan be his slaves. Some of you want to be Ham? You're going to be Ham to the Shams and the Jephas in the church because your lack of understanding of authority. If you're out there to take down authority, God's going to put you in the back row as a servant doing the lowest of the low. If your heart is to protect the appointment, then God's going to put you on top. You want to be a person like David who's after God's heart? We have King Saul who likes to say, but I did this, I did that, but He wants to kill David. Now David, a person after God's own heart, has an opportunity, few by the way, to kill King Saul, take his throne. He can go to God. God, look at King Saul. He's trying to kill me. He's making me look bad. I bring him victory. I do all this hard work. And look, God. He's throwing a spear at me to kill me. He, he, he's just using me, God. Did, did David pray like that? No. Whether you deal with a leader that is nice to you or mean to you, it's your test. David didn't find, look for opportunities to make Saul look bad. David didn't find opportunities to kill him, even though the opportunity was presented to him by God. Aha! I knew it! God, uh, David actually protected Saul, protected his reputation, even in front of his men. No, don't touch King Saul. He don't tell his men, oh yeah, he sucks. He tried to kill me every time he saw me. He's slandering me. He don't give me any credit. And he said, no, he's God's anointed. Don't touch him. See, David is not protecting the man per se. David is protecting the anointing. David is protecting the reputation of God. He's looking beyond the person Saul. He's looking at the appointee. God chose this man, and I'm going to protect that choice. No, whether Saul is a good person or a bad person, that doesn't reflect on King or David to slander him or kill him or to whatever he wants to do with him. Because God chose him to be my leader, even though whether he understands it or not, whether you know, King Saul understands it or not, David's job is I'm going to cover my leader even though he doesn't like me. And I'm not going to find an opportunity to kill him. And if I have to just run, I'll run away. And that's the person after God's heart. 
he understood kingdom principle. He didn't, he, he didn't, he didn't apply Western principle. You hurt me, I'm going to get you back, sucker. That's the Western principle, right? You, you, I'm going to get you back. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. Ooh. You know, before David became king, he like, just like Joseph, right? Ten years under Potiphar, and then just when he thought it was going to get good, two years, oh, you know, what, I pray for ten years, God. I serve this Potiphar. He gets blessed because of me, and now I'm thrown in prison? Did he have that kind of attitude? No, he did not. Joseph just stayed neutral, did his thing with God, and weighed out the time, and, on the, uh, and that by interpreting those dreams, it became fruit after two years. King David now, he's running from, you know, or David, he's running from King Saul for like 17 years. And before he becomes king, he has this big test. You know what that test is? See, before God raises you up, you have this test coming, okay? And you can, you can get mad at God. Like, I can't believe this God. You know, I did all this, blah, blah, blah. And now you're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, back of the line. <laughs> king Saul is like driven to kill David. David is protecting his, you know, covering him constantly. He's doing the heart of God, okay? And then, if you know the story, right? He has the 600 men. He, he has his wives and children. They get raided. They get raided, and their wives and children get taken, right? Captive, hostage, he returns and his men are like, oh, they're pissed, right? We, we want to stone David. We followed you and look, we lost everything. We lost our wives, we lost our kids, we lost our money. Oh, what well, are we wasting our time? In that moment, it's a pivotal moment for David. What's he going to do, right? God is watching him. I'm about to make you king of this nation. How are you going to react to me when it looks like I just took away everything? Or what you thought was going to turn out good turned out really bad. Because your wives are gone. Your children are gone. Your sheep is gone. Your money is gone. And your own people want to kill you now. The Bible says they want, they're going to stone, they want to stone David, right? Do you understand? Before you raise, it feels really bad, okay? But if you're going to define your life on, on that bad right there, you're not going to get raised up. So, God, so King David, what does he do? Okay, I'm teaching you what it takes to be a person after God's own heart. King David asks God, should we follow? Should we go after them, God? See, he didn't complain. Oh, how did you do this to me, God? He's a man of worship when his own baby died. He went to worship. And so when it looked like he lost everything, he went to prayer again. What do I do, God? Should I go after them? Go after them. Am I going to Overtake them? Yes, you will. Some of you will take an answer. Go after them. And you go without asking the second question. Well, am I going to have victory, God? But pastor said, go. It didn't turn out right. You know, when, you know, in the book of Judges, when they asked God, should we go after the Benjamin tribe first time? God said, go. And guess what? 22,000 died. They lost the battle. Let's ask pastor again. Should we take this job? Should we do that? Go! Second time, they lost to Benjamin too. And many more thousands died. Third time, 
Shall we go, God? Oh, shall we go? Oh, go. But are we going to win this time? Yes. Maybe you need to ask that question. It, do you want me to go, God? Instead of asking, can I go? You understand the difference there? A lot of you lack that second question to God. Do you want me to go, though? Because your desire is too strong. And you ask God if you can do certain things without asking him if that's what he wants, though. And then you get in trouble. And then you're going to blame God. You're going to blame me. You're going to blame other people. Not realizing that, hey, you know, God said go, though. Yeah, but you didn't ask the other question. Did he want you to go? God, do you want me to go? Even though you're saying yes. That's very important. Eh? You got to understand God's ways. Amen? You don't understand God's way. Your, see, your will, God's revealing your will. That's what he's showing. Look, you're being driven by your will. You want my permission. Okay, I'm going to give you my permission. So you can learn the hard way. And I'm going to give you my permission to show you what's in your heart. That you're a very angry person with me. You got to look at all the angles. Amen. Okay, let's stop there. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, guys.